Good day, Great Tools. I apologize for that. Um, for some reason, the connection was just dropped. Um, and now we're here. So welcome to our next lesson on chemical equilibria. Um, if you remember, we were talking about Le Chatelier's principle and we were talking about Oh, sorry, we were talking about Le Chatelier's principle and we were talking about the equilibrium shifting and which way it would be favoured. And we got as far as talking about what would happen if there was an increase in pressure. And remember we said that with regards to pressure, it's always going to move to the side that's going to shift in the favour of a decrease or increase. In other words, if the pressure is increased, then what will happen is the equilibrium will shift to favor a decrease in pressure, which means the side of fewer moles. So for an increase in pressure, in this case, there are four moles on this side and two moles on this side. And two, even though they're the same number of atoms and the same number, if you look here, there's going to be two nitrogens and six hydrogens. And over here, there's two nitrogens, two times three, six hydrogens. So you've got the same number of atoms on both sides of the reaction, which it should be because of the law of conservation of matter. What happens is, though, is that if you have an increase in pressure, if you look over here, what has happened is you'll end up with more ammonia if you've got an increase in pressure. Yeah, they've got one, two, three, four ammonias and some hydrogens and nitrogens. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six ammonias. The reason being is that the ammonia takes up less space as a molecule than the nitrogen molecule and hydrogen molecules take up separately. So therefore, there are that will always favor the forward reaction if there's an increase in pressure. Similarly, if there's a decrease in pressure, it's going to favor the side with more moles. It's going to stretch out, it's going to relax. So you're going to end up with it being on the side with more moles. So in this case, it would favor the reverse reaction. It's going to favor the reverse reaction. So the reverse reaction is favored okay and yeah you can see that if you decrease in pressure yeah you've gone from four molecules of ammonia down to two and the reason again is because this stuff here will have lots more space to spread out and that's why it's going to go in that direction okay now let's talk about the effects of a catalyst now a catalyst plays a huge role in the reaction rate the reaction rate okay remember it speeds up the reaction without actually participating in it however when it what a catalyst does when added to reaction it increases both the forward and reverse reactions equally okay both the reverse and forward reactions are increased so therefore the concentrations of the reactants and products will remain the same therefore a catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium position however Obviously, since the reaction rate is faster, we'll get to equilibrium more quickly, okay? But it has no effect on the equilibrium position. So now we need to talk about the, what factors are that influence the value of Kc, okay? And this is really important, okay? Concentration, pressure, and temperature all affect the equilibrium position, but only temperature affects the value of Kc. Okay, and the reason for this is changing the temperature will favor either the endothermic or exothermic reaction. But what happens is the ratio between the concentration of reactants and products will change, and therefore Kc will change. So this is another one of those things where I say to you that if I had to contact you at two o'clock in the morning, wake you up from the deepest sleep ever and say, what affects Kc? You would go temperature, go back to sleep, not even remember that I woke you up to ask you the question. So I don't know why I would do that. I'm just using this as an example of how important it is that temperature is the only thing that affects Kc. Okay, everything else, Kc remains the same and just the equilibrium shifts accordingly. So now, we're going to go through nice, some nice exam paper questions, okay, and then we're going to, let's see, one, two, three, okay, there are quite a few. We're going to go through some nice exam paper questions, and this time I've left the 
exam paper question in and I've left the mark allocation in. And there's a reason for this. I want you to start looking at the mark allocation to give you an idea of how in-depth your answer has to be, especially, especially with respect to explanations. And if you see this is a seven mark question, you go, oh, okay, I need to do some work for this, okay? So let's have a look at it. It says the reaction represented reaches equilibrium at 350 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's the temperature in a two decimeter cube container. On analysis, it is found that 0.8 moles of sulfur dioxide, 0.5 moles of oxygen, and 0.6 moles of SO3 contain. That's at equilibrium. So they give you the equation. It's 2SO2 plus O2 is in dynamic equilibrium with 2SO3 and delta H is smaller than 0, which means it's an exothermic reaction. Now grade 12s, what I just did there is exactly how I would do this question if I'd never seen it before. I would, and there are questions that I will have come across that I've never seen before because every teacher is obviously setting their own papers or if not they're setting questions that are dependent or, or similar to other people's but there's always something like a little tweak or something. So there's several questions that I will never have seen before and this is how I would do it and I would like to stress that every teacher like I said um, okay we're not genii okay we've done lots of examples of them of these things um, I had a question yesterday where one of my students said do you just look at it and know how to do it <laughs> well if you've been teaching for as long as I have you do tend to get to that point but also there is a pattern to it and also there's a way of analyzing the question okay there's a way of reading it and that's what I'm trying to show you now I'm trying to show you that what I've done is I've said okay fine I've said, look here, it reaches at it reaches equilibrium 350 degrees Celsius. The reason I'm marking it is because, remember we spoke about, what is the only thing that affects KC is temperature. So if we change that, it's going to change our KC value. It's in a two decimeter cube container. Remember, if we do a table, we're going to have to take that into consideration. And they tell us that this is what is, it's the number of moles it is at equilibrium. So we've got that, so we might not have to do a table. And then obviously, if we're talking at the Chatelier's principle and everything, then I'm seeing the delta H is smaller than all that's exothermic, so temperature again plays a role. Okay. So that's the why I how I've read this and what I've said about it, okay? So when you guys read this during your reading time, this is what you should be doing mentally before you even start your exam paper, okay? It says explain what is meant by the term equilibrium. Just the term equilibrium. So equilibrium is the stage in which the forward reaction, okay, um, is at the same rate as the reverse reaction. Or you could say, another thing you could say with equilibrium is that there is um, no macroscopic change. In other words, we can't see a change on the macroscopic level, but there is a microscopic change. Okay, now 6.4 per 2, it says, what must the pressure in the container be changed to? To Okay, how must, sorry, how must the pressure in the container be changed to increase the yield of SO3? Write down only increase or decrease. Okay, so let's look at this and let's write it out here. We've got 2 SO2 gas plus O2 gas is in dynamic equilibrium with 2SO3 gas. And why am I so impressed about the fact that they're gases? Because we're talking pressure. And pressure only messes with gases. So if these had been solids and there'd only been one gas, we would have only worried about that single gas. Okay, but this is all gas. Now we want the pressure must be changed to increase the yield of SO3. So we want 
more of this stuff. So we want the reaction to go this way. We want it to go a forward reaction. Okay, so when we're talking pressure, what are we talking? We're talking number of moles. So what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of moles on this side. So 2 plus 1 is 3 moles on this side and the 2 moles on this side. So in order to go that way, what do we need to do? We need to somehow make our pressure favor the side with a fewer number of moles. So we need to increase the pressure. We need to increase the pressure. We need to push it this way in order to make more SO3. Okay, explain your answer in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Now grade 12s, I don't care what your answer is. The very first thing you need to write, okay, I do care what your answer is. What I mean is, before you write anything else, you will write by Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, you will write that. Even if they say in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, you will write it. Okay, you will write by Le Chatelier's principle and then you write your reason, okay? But you will always write by Le Chatelier's principle first. It's the same as, and just as important as effective, more effective collisions per unit time. If you leave out the per unit time, you get the marks wrong, okay? For this, you have to write by Le Chatelier's principle. And then you would say an increase in pressure favors the side with fewer moles, therefore more SO3 will be made. There you go. Or something along those lines. An increase in pressure favors the side with fewer moles, therefore the forward reaction will be favored. Anything like that. But if you do not write by the Shadley's principle, I wipe my hands off the fact that you will lose those marks. So please, please, please write that down. Okay, now let's look at 6.4.4. And I don't think I need any of this. No, so we're going to raise like. Okay, it says um, the temperature is now increased to 500 degrees Celsius. Okay, and the reaction is now allowed to reach equilibrium again at the new temperature. On analysis, it is now found that you've got 0.3 moles of SO2 in the, in the present in the container. Calculate the equilibrium constant at 500 degrees, 500 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're going to use our rice. Okay, we've got rice, R, rice is the reaction. I, C, E, and your equilibrium concentration. Our reaction is 2SO2 plus O2 is in dynamic equilibrium with 2SO3. We're going to draw a couple of lines. And what you need to realize is that it was already in equilibrium over here. So these are the starting amounts. These are the initial amounts. These are the starting amounts for the new reaction, which reaches a new dynamic equilibrium, where it is found that we've now got 0.3 moles of SO2. So we started with 0.8 moles of this stuff, 0.5 moles of this, and 0.6 moles of this. And at equilibrium, we were told we've got 0.3 moles of SO2, 0.3. Okay, so now we can work out everything else. Okay, so do you agree that to get from 0.5 to 0.3, what do we have to have done? We need to have subtracted. We used up some of it. So we used up 0.5, 0.5. Okay, now remember that this dude here, this change line, is the line that we use in conjunction with the reaction and the coefficients. Okay, so do you see that this here, just let's start with the twos and twos, do you agree that this is in relation to that? So two moles of SO2 is going to give me two moles of SO3. Okay, so two moles of SO2 gives me two moles of SO3, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means if I use up 0.5 moles, I must have made 0.5 moles, so I end up with 1.1 mole. Okay, 
Then this is on a ratio of two to one, which means for every two moles of SO2 I use, I use one mole of oxygen. So I'm going to use half this amount. So this becomes minus 0, 0,25. So I'm left with 0, 0,25 again. Okay. And then what do we need to do? We now need to change into concentrations. But remember what they told us the volume was. They told us this was a two decimeter cube container. And remember what I said before. I said what we could do is always write divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. So before we even start this, we know we have to divide by two. So this is 0, 0,3 divided by two, which is going to be 0, 0,15. This is 0, 0,25 divided by 2, which is 0, 0,125. And this is 1, 1 divided by 2, which is 0, what is that? That is 5, 5. Okay, so these are concentrations at the new temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. Okay, and now they want us to work out the Kc, the equilibrium constant. So we have to get the mass expression. So Kc is going to be, it's always products of a reactants. So it's SO3 squared all over SO2 squared multiplied by O2, which is going to be 0, 0,55 squared over 0, 0,15 squared multiplied by 0, 0,125. And I know we're going to round off our final answer to two decimal places, but there's nothing wrong with using a three decimal thing as we're busy working, as long as the final answer is round off to two decimal places. So let's put that into our calculator. We okay. So we need, and this is in stats, so let me just fix this mode and make it one. Okay, there we go. So now we've got 0 0.55 squared all over 0 0.15 squared times by 0 0.125, no, delete, 1, 2, 5 equals and we press the AC button and that's 107.56 wow 107.56 so it's a huge yield it's huge okay now it says at which temperature and there's your seven marks by the way at which temperature will the kc value be greater at 350 degrees celsius and 500 degrees celsius and do you remember at the beginning i said look at this delta h is negative and what did that mean that meant that the forward reaction was exothermic the forward reaction was exothermic so the forward reaction does not like heat. So which way do you think it'll work? The one that's going to be better is going to be the 350 degrees Celsius because it's going to be cooler. So which temperature will the KC value be greater at 350 degrees Celsius? There you go. Okay, let's move on. Okay, new question. Initially, excess ammonium hydrogen sulfide is placed in a five decimeter cube container at 218 degrees Celsius. Again, important numbers, okay? The container is sealed and the reaction is allowed to reach equilibrium. Delta H is greater than naught, which means it's endothermic, okay? Stateless shuttle's principle, I'm not doing it. You guys must learn it. Okay, basically it says if we push one way, it's going to sort it out. Okay, what effect will each of the following changes have on the amount, the amount of ammonia at equilibrium, right? Only increases, decreases, and remains the same. Okay, so what are the things that change? We've got concentration. We've got pressure. And we've got temperature. Those are the things that change our equilibrium position. Okay, adding more ammonium hydrogen sulfide 
theoretically would increase it because we would think that it would increase our concentration, right? There'd be new, more parts per unit volume. However, this is a solid. And solids, as we know, we do not include in the KC because their concentration remains one. So in this case, it remains the same. Nothing else happens. Adding more is not going to shift that equilibrium in any way. Okay, what happens if we increase the temperature? The forward reaction is endothermic. So that means it likes heat. So it likes heat, which means the reverse reaction must hate heat. Okay, so the forward reaction, now we've said the temperature's increased, which means we're going to make more of ammonia, so it is increased. Okay, and remember, you don't, obviously you need to write remains the same and increases, you don't just do RTS in the arrow. Okay, but you do not need to write reasons. They didn't ask you for reasons, it's only one mark each. Now it says the equilibrium constant, there you go, Kc is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4. It says calculate the minimum mass of ammonium hydrogen sulfide that must be sealed into the container to obtain an equilibrium. Okay, now we did a very similar question to this um, previously. So now we're going to work through it nice and slowly. So do you agree that since this is a solid, your Kc is just given by the concentration of the ammonia multiplied by the concentration of the hydrogen sulfide, okay? But do you see that this ratio is one to one? And concentration is number of moles over volume, and the volume for the whole container is going to be the same. So the concentration of these is actually the same. Okay, the concentration of these is the same at equilibrium, okay, because it's a ratio of one to one. So we can say let the concentration equal x. So therefore we've got x multiplied by x is going to be x squared is 1 comma 2 times by 10 to the negative 4. So we can get the value of the concentration, okay, is equal to the square root of 1 comma 2 times by 10 to the negative 4. So if we square root it, we get square root of 1.2 exponent negative 4, which is 0, comma, 0, 1. Okay, so x equals 0, comma, 0, 1. And that is moles per decimeter cubed. That is the concentration of either of these two. Okay, but now if we want to find the mass of this stuff, what we need to do is we need to find the number of moles first of all. And to find the number of moles of this, we need to find the number of moles of that, that was actually used, not just the ratio. So we say, okay, fine, this is equal to number of moles over the volume is 0, 0, 1. But the volume is five decimeters cubed. So the number of moles is five times by 0, 0, 0, 1 which is 0, 0, 5. So now we know that the number of moles of ammonium hydrogen sulfide are 0, 0, 5. 0, 0, 5 moles of ammonium hydrogen sulfide reacted, okay? So that would be the minimum mass that it has to be in this container, but we've only got moles, we have to convert it to mass. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. So what do we have? We have got the number of moles, which is 0, 0, 5, times by the molar mass, which is going to be the nitrogen, which is 14, plus the hydrogen, which is 5, plus the sulfur, which is 32. And let's just get out a calculator and sort that out for us so quickly. So it's going to be 14 plus 5 plus 32 equals multiply by 0 0.05 equals the mass is 2,55 grams. 2,55 grams. The mass that we had to use, the minimum mass that you had to use was 2,55 grams.
There you go. It says the pressure in the container is now increased by decreasing the volume of the container at a constant temperature. It says, how will this change affect the number of moles of hydrogen sulfide produced? Fully explain your answer. Okay, so do you agree that usually with pressure, you have to look at the number of moles of a gas? But have you, if you look at this carefully, do you see that there are two moles of gas here and no moles of gas here, right? So if we increase the pressure, which way are we going to go? We're going to favor the reverse reaction. And then when they say fully explain your answer, you need to again go by Le Chatelier's principle. Principle, okay. Increasing the pressure will favor the side with the least amount of moles of gas and therefore it will favor the reverse reaction and the number of moles of H2S produced will decrease. There you go. Sure, okay. Right, now let's do this question, I think. Oh, two more, okay, then we can do graphs. Yeah, okay. There's a reason I, haven't we done this one? No. Um, there's a reason I included these two. This one again is because it's got a nice X question in it. And this one because it's got grams, which is a bit different. Okay, so I've included those four reasons. So let's include this. Let's do it. It says study the reversible reaction represented by the balanced equation below. Hydrogen plus carbon dioxide forms water plus carbon monoxide. And you'll see they're all pretty gases. Okay, now it says, and let's use the highlighter effectively. X moles of hydrogen gas is mixed with 0.3 moles of carbon dioxide in its sealed decimeter cube container. When equilibrium was reached, the concentration, concentration of carbon monoxide was 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed, and the KC was 4. Again, they said state Le Chatelier's principle. So guys, the reason they ask you to state Le Chatelier's principle is because of the fact that they want you to actually know that you're going to be using Le Chatelier's principle. So it's kind of the hint, okay? So please go learn Le Chatelier's principle. I mean, just from the example of the last two questions, you can see that it comes up quite often. Now it says, calculate the initial number of moles of X of hydrogen that was in the container. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. First of all, we're going to have to write out, we're going to use write, okay? So we've got R, I, C, E, and E, concentration. We have got some hydrogen gas, I'm not going to bother with the Gs, plus some carbon dioxide gas is in dynamic equilibrium with water, vapor, it's a gas, oh, I wrote it down, plus carbon monoxide. Okay, so there's our columns and there's our rows for our little table. Grade 12s, please take the time to draw this in pencil and use a ruler. Okay, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit neat, okay, when you are drawing these things out. Okay, let's talk about initially. Initially, we've got X moles of hydrogen is mixed with 0, 0,3 moles of carbon dioxide in a sealed 10 cubic decimeter cubed container. So there you go, I've already divided by 10. At equilibrium, the concentration of the carbon monoxide was given as 0,02. And they told us the KC was 4, we'll worry about that later. So right, so now this is all the information that's been given to us. And so now we're going to use that information and we're going to find the rest of these, this line here, and plug it into our mass expression to get our KC of 4 and solve for x. Okay, so do you agree that they don't mention anything about water vapor or carbon monoxide in the original seal container? So we can assume, therefore, that we had zero of that. Otherwise, they would have told us. This year is 0,02 is a concentration, but we got that 
problem dividing the number of moles. So if we go backwards, this is going to be 0, 2, which means at equilibrium I had 0, 2, which means that I made 0, 2. Now remember grade 12 was again, I said it again, this bit here, this change line, that is what we use with our reaction line and our coefficient. Okay, which are pretty easy this time. They are 1, 1, 1, and 1, which means that if one mole of carbon monoxide was formed, then one mole of water vapor was formed. But we only had 0 0.2, so therefore we've got 0 0.2 forming, 0 0.2 forming here, which means we've got 0 0.2 at equilibrium. That means that in order to make one mole of water vapor, we must have used one mole of carbon dioxide, but it's on a ratio of one to one, which means I've used 0, 2, which means I've got 0, 1 left. So that's 0, 1 there. Sorry, this is 0, 2, yeah? Yes, yeah, similarly, it's a ratio of one to one. So this time it's going to be x minus not oh, sorry this is sorry 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 my bad. the change is again minus naught comma two which means I left with x minus naught comma two this is x minus naught comma two Sorry guys, I'm not sure where I have. Okay. I'm not sure where I lost you. Um it said that it had lost some connection. So just look around at the purple. Basically what we have here is that we've used 0.2 moles on the left hand side and we've made 0.2 moles and that has left us with x minus 0.2 moles over here at equilibrium. So now we're going to use this and we're going to write that that is 0.01 and this is 0.02. Now we have to use those values in our KC. We have to use these values in our KC. So I'm going to change color so it's easier to see. And I'm going to say, okay, we've got KC is equal to the concentration, it's always products of reactants, of H2O all over the concentration of the hydrogen gas multiplied by the concentration of the carbon dioxide. Okay, therefore it is 0, 0, 2 multiplied by 0, 0, 2 all over, in this case it's x minus 0, 2 over 10 and that's 0, 0, 1. Okay, and that is equal to 4. Okay, because they told us so. So therefore, do you agree we can say, well, in that case, we can multiply this 0, 0, 1 to this side. So we get 0, 0, 4. I've just multiplied 4 by 0, 0, is equal to 0, 0, 2 all squared all over x minus 0, 2 over 10. Okay. So do you agree I can say, therefore, that x minus 0, 2 over 10 is equal to 0, 0, 2 squared divided by 0, 0, 4. Okay, so let's do that on our calculator first. We're just going to do this right hand side on our calculator just to make it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. So we're going to go 0, 0, 0.02 squared 
all divided by 0 0.04 and that is 1 over 100 okay so x minus 0 0.2 over 10 is equal to 0 0.01 1 over 100 I can multiply both sides by 10 so I get x minus 0 0.2 is going to be 0 0.1 and we take it across and x equals 0 0.3 Three. There you go. So there we go that x equals 0, 3. And in fact, now that I think about it, we've actually done a question that is almost identical to this, if not exactly identical. And it's come out of another exam paper because I haven't used this exam paper question before, which means that this type of question is going to come up quite often, comes up quite often. Okay, now it says the reaction is now carried out at a much higher temperature and it says that Kc decreases, decreases at this higher temperature. Is the Ford reaction exothermic or react endothermic? Okay, so let's think about this. Kc equals the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So do you agree that if Kc decreases, it means that you've got more of the denominator, which means we're going to have more of the reactants. So if Kc decreases, it means we favored the reverse reaction. And what did we do? We increased the temperature, which means the forward reaction must be... Okay, so increasing the temperature favors the reverse reaction. So the reverse reaction is endothermic, which means the forward reaction must be exothermic. There you go. That's how easy that was. Okay, now let's look at this and we've got some time. It says 112.84 grams of mercury to oxide, that's the mass, is heated in a 250 cubic centimeter cubic centimeter sealed container and it says the decomposition takes place and represented by the following equation 2 mercury oxide goes to 2 mercury plus oxygen delta H is greater than zero the equilibrium is reached at 650 degrees celsius and it says and that just says at equilibrium the mass of mercury to oxide is 69,44 grams okay so now what does it say it says for this reaction, a sealed container is classified as a closed system. Explain why this is so. So a closed system is basically a system in which, we just basically they're asking you what is a closed system in your own words. So a closed system is one in which nothing can get out or, or get in to affect the, relation, the reaction. So that's all a closed system is. Now it says calculate the equilibrium constant at 650 degrees for this reaction. Okay, so again, grade 12s, what did I say to you yesterday? I said to you, you need to have all your data sheets with you, including your periodic table. And I'm going to be nice. I'm going to tell you what the molar masses are. So the molar mass of mercury, is, we've got mercury, oxygen, um, and that's all we really need. The molar mass of mercury is going to be 201. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16. Okay, and that's all you need to know in order to be able to solve these problems, okay? Because why? Because the KC table includes moles, not grams. Whenever you're doing anything to do with equilibrium and everything, you may not use the grams. You have to change them into moles. So we know that we've got 2 HGO is... In dynamic equilibrium with 2HG plus O2. Okay, now what's interesting is that this is a solid and this is a liquid. So this dude here is the only one that's going to be in your KC. Interesting, hey. We still need to do our table so we can find out, and that's with the, wow, this is with nine marks. So we can find out how many moles of O2 we have at it. So we're going to do rice. So we got R, that was R. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, so we've got R, I, C, E, E. Okay. And they told us that the volume is 
250 cubic centimeters. Okay, which means we need to change it into decimeters cubed. So that becomes 0, 0,25 decimeters cubed. Remember to get from cubic centimeters to decimeters. What do you cubed? What do we do? We divide by a thousand. We divide by a thousand. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop right now. And we are going to continue with this um, in tomorrow's lesson. And then we will talk about after this, we'll talk about some graphs and how the graphs change when it comes to chemical equilibria. And then we'll do some exam paper questions on that as well. Right. I hope you have a good evening. Cheers.